Hello everyone! In today's video, we're going to thoroughly explain ARM, a company that plays a very important role in the semiconductor industry. You might have heard the name ARM, but many people probably don't know exactly what kind of company it is or how it makes a profit, right? In this video, we'll be explaining in detail ARM's business model, revenue structure, and even its future prospects, all from an investor's perspective. This is a must-watch, especially for students interested in technology, business professionals working in the IoT industry, and individual investors considering investing in ARM stock, so please watch until the end. First, let's take a look at what kind of company ARM is and why it's so important. ARM's technology is used in almost all of the products around you, like smartphones and tablets. That's how deeply involved they are in our lives. So, has your interest in ARM peaked a little? If you've become interested, please let me know in the comments. Okay, next let's take a look at ARM's basic business model. ARM is a semiconductor design company headquartered in the UK. What's important here is that ARM is a fabless company, meaning they don't manufacture semiconductors themselves. In other words, ARM develops semiconductor blueprints, or intellectual property, IP, and earns revenue by licensing it to other companies. Let's try explaining this business model using a restaurant as an example. ARM is like a restaurant that develops recipes, or IP, for making the best dishes. And then, they provide those recipes to other restaurants, or semiconductor manufacturers. Each restaurant, based on ARM's recipes, adds their own flavor or customization to complete the final dish, which is the semiconductor. With this example, I think you can understand ARM's business model a little better, right? Specifically, the IP that ARM provides includes CPU IP, which is the blueprint for CPUs, GPU IP for image processing, and system IP, such as memory controllers. By combining these IPs, customers can design SOCs, which are semiconductors that integrate the entire system into a single chip. ARM's IP is used in all kinds of electronic devices, such as smartphones, tablets, PCs, servers, and automobiles. It's said that about 99% of the smartphones we use every day have ARM-based chips in them, you know? That just shows how widely ARM's technology is adopted around the world, doesn't it? Next, let's take a look at ARM's revenue structure. ARM's main sources of revenue are the two pillars of licensing fees and royalty fees. First, let's talk about licensing fees. Licensing fees are the fees that ARM receives when they provide customers with the right to use the IP they've developed. This is equivalent to the fee for purchasing a recipe in our earlier restaurant example. There are mainly two types of license agreements. The first is an architecture license. This is a license that allows customers to design and develop their own CPUs using ARM's instruction set architecture. For example, Apple has acquired this license. The second is an implementation license. This is a license that allows the use of ARM's designed CPU cores, as they are, or with some customization. Many semiconductor manufacturers have acquired this license. Licensing fees can be paid in a lump sum at the time of the contract, or in installments over several years. For ARM, it's an important source of revenue when acquiring new customers, or renewing contracts with existing customers. Okay, next let's take a look at royalty fees. Royalty fees are the fees paid to ARM each time a semiconductor manufactured using ARM's IP is sold, based on the number of units sold. In our restaurant example, it's like a commission paid to the creator of the recipe each time a dish made using that recipe is sold. Royalty fees are usually set at a few cents to a few tens of cents per semiconductor. It might seem like a small amount at first glance, but since hundreds of billions of ARM-based semiconductors are shipped annually, it adds up to a huge sum. The strength of ARM's business model lies in these royalty fees. The more semiconductors that adopt ARM's IP are shipped, the more ARM's revenue increases. 
This is why it's said that ARM has a business model that allows them to earn money while they sleep. Furthermore, once a product that has adopted ARM's IP succeeds in the market, they can continuously earn royalty income as long as the product's life cycle continues. So what do you think? ARM's revenue structure is quite interesting, isn't it? Now let's take a closer look at ARM's revenue by business segment. ARM's business is broadly divided into two segments, the licensing business and the royalty business. The licensing business mainly consists of licensing fees, and the royalty business mainly consists of royalty fees. In the full year revenue for 2024, the licensing business accounted for approximately $1.18 billion, or about 36.8% of the total. On the other hand, the royalty business was approximately $2.03 billion, accounting for about 63.2% of the total. The high proportion of the royalty business demonstrates the strength of ARM's business model. As long as products that have adopted ARM's IP continue to sell around the world, ARM can earn stable revenue. In particular, the recent increase in demand for semiconductors for smartphones and data centers has greatly boosted ARM's royalty income. Also, the licensing business plays the role of sowing seeds for future royalty income. By developing new IP and technology and licensing it, products that adopt that IP will eventually appear on the market, leading to royalty income. Furthermore, when we look at ARM's revenue by business sector, it can be classified into mobile, data center slash server, automotive slash embedded, and IoT slash other sectors. First, let's take a look at the mobile market. Although the smartphone market is maturing, ARM's technology continues to be adopted in many smartphones. With the spread of 5G-compatible smartphones, the demand for high-performance and high-efficiency chips remains high. Next, let's take a look at the data center and server market. As represented by AWS's Graviton series, the adoption of ARM-based server CPUs is expanding. The number of companies providing ARM-based server CPUs, such as Ampere Computing and NVIDIA, is increasing. With the increasing demand for cloud services and AI processing, the data center market is expected to continue to grow. Next, let's take a look at the automotive and embedded market. With the electrification of automobiles and the advancement of autonomous driving technology, the demand for in-vehicle semiconductors is rapidly increasing. ARM provides safe and reliable in-vehicle processors and is strengthening its collaboration with automobile manufacturers. ARM's adoption in embedded systems, such as industrial equipment and medical devices, is also increasing. Finally, let's take a look at the IoT and other sectors. ARM-based chips are being adopted in a wide range of fields, such as wearable devices, smart home devices, and industrial IoT. With the spread of 5G and AI, the IoT market is expected to expand further in the future. Among these sectors, the data center slash server, automotive slash embedded, and IoT sectors are showing remarkable growth and are becoming important pillars supporting ARM's future. Okay, next, let's take a look at ARM's revenue structure by region. Looking at ARM's full-year revenue for 2024 by region, China accounts for about 24.5%, the United States for over 40%, Taiwan for about 10%, South Korea for about 8%, and other regions for about 17%. Looking at it by region, the United States accounts for the largest share, followed by China. First, let's take a look at the Asian region. There are many major production bases for smartphones and IoT devices, and the trends in the Chinese market in particular have a significant impact on ARM's revenue. However, there is also a high possibility of being affected by the US-China trade friction and geopolitical risks. Next, let's take a look at the North American region. The demand for data centers from major cloud providers is expanding, and the adoption of ARM-based server CPUs is increasing. In the automotive sector, EV manufacturers such as Tesla are also adopting ARM-based chips. 
Next let's take a look at the European region. Demand is expected in the automotive industry and industrial equipment sectors. The EU's semiconductor industry strengthening policy may lead to increased semiconductor development in Europe. Finally, let's take a look at the other regions. With the growth of emerging markets, demand for IoT and mobile devices is expected to expand. As you can see, ARM's revenue structure differs by region, and regional strategies are important. Okay, from here, let's take a look at ARM's strengths and risk factors. First, let's take a look at ARM's strengths. The first strength is the richness of its ecosystem. Many software development tools and peripheral IPs are designed based on the ARM instruction set, creating a strong environment that makes it difficult for new entrants to enter. The second strength is its power-saving and highly efficient architecture. With the design optimized for battery-powered devices, it has an overwhelming track record in smartphones and IoT. Even in the server space, it matches the need to reduce power costs, and its adoption is expanding. The third strength is its application in a wide range of fields. In addition to smartphones, it has many expanding markets, such as automobiles, IoT, and data centers. Diversification is progressing, allowing it to supplement revenue in other markets, even if one market stagnates. The fourth strength is its active investment in research and development. In the fiscal year ending March 2024, it invested approximately $1.75 billion in research and development, accounting for about 54% of total revenue. It maintains its competitiveness through continuous technological innovation. Okay, next let's take a look at ARM's risk factors. The first risk factor is the rise of competing technologies. If open source architectures such as RISCV become widespread, ARM's licensing business could be threatened. In particular, the adoption of RISCV is expanding in China. The second risk factor is geopolitical risk. Due to its high dependence on the Chinese market, it may be affected by US-China trade friction and export regulations. The increasing tension in Taiwan also poses a risk to the supply chain. The third risk factor is the maturation of the smartphone market. The smartphone sector is already saturated, and rapid growth like in the past is unlikely. How much profit can be expanded in new sectors, servers, automobiles, IoT, will be key in the future. The fourth risk factor is the concentration of customers. The top five customers account for about 57% of total revenue, indicating a high dependence on specific customers. Finally, let's take a look at ARM from an investor's perspective. As an investor, it's important to pay attention to the following points regarding ARM. First, it's the expansion of market share in the server market. Following the success of AWS's Graviton series, it's important to see how much other cloud vendors will adopt ARM-based server CPUs. The trends of Ampere Computing and NVIDIA are also important. Next, it's the expansion of entry into the automotive industry. With the electrification of automobiles and the advancement of autonomous driving technology, the demand for in-vehicle semiconductors is rapidly increasing. The focus is on whether ARM can provide safe and reliable in-vehicle processors and expand its market share. Next, it's the competitive situation with RISC-V. It's necessary to closely monitor the trends of RISC-V, especially in the Chinese market. The key point is whether ARM can leverage the strength of its ecosystem to compete with RISC-V. Next, it's the response to geopolitical risks. It's important to see how they will adjust their dependence on the Chinese market. Expansion of business in other regions, such as the United States and Europe, is required. Finally, it's the results of research and development. It's important to see whether ARM can continuously innovate and maintain its competitiveness. 
It's necessary to respond to next-generation technologies, such as AI processing and security. Okay, that's a summary of today's video. Arm has established a business model that secures stable revenue through the two pillars of licensing agreements and royalty income. It traditionally has an overwhelming share in the smartphone sector, and in recent years, it has been expanding its business into new areas such as servers, automobiles, and IoT, increasing its revenue. On the other hand, there are also uncertain factors, such as the rise of competing architectures and geopolitical risks, so as an investor, it's good to pay attention to the following points. The maturation of the smartphone market and ARM's share maintenance status, the speed of revenue expansion in new markets such as servers, automobiles, and IoT, the competitive advantage against open source architectures such as RISCV, regulatory and political risks in Asian markets including China, and the results of investment in research and development and technological innovation. The ecosystem and technological superiority that ARM has cultivated are still strong, but the focus is on how they will differentiate themselves and capture growth markets in the future. In particular, growth is expected in the data center slash server market, the automotive market, and the IoT market. Also, responding to geopolitical risks and competition with RISCV are important issues. Whether you already own ARM stock or are considering investing in it, please use these perspectives as a reference for your consideration. It's important to pay close attention to ARM's latest financial results and business strategies and make investment decisions carefully. ARM plays an important role in the global technology industry. Armed with its unique business model of semiconductor IP licensing, the company's revenue structure balances stability and growth by combining licensing fees and royalty fees in a well-balanced manner. In the future, ARM is expected to continue to play an important role in cutting-edge technology fields such as AI, IoT, and autonomous driving. The company's technology and business model should serve as the foundation for the evolution of technology in the future. Let's definitely keep an eye on ARM's future developments. How was today's video? If you found it even a little bit helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, we're waiting for your thoughts and questions in the comments. Well then, see you in the next video.